How does prophetic ministry fit into the church? Well, referencing Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 through 14, we see that there are two primary purposes for prophetic ministry and four primary goals of prophetic ministry. So this scripture says, And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers, for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. Now we see here that these things actually apply to more than just prophetic ministry. So this series is on prophecy, but this would apply to other leadership ministries as well. So the first main thing is that the leadership gifts were given to equip people for the work of the ministry. So the church needs to be a place of equipping for training, a place where we can teach people to better serve God, to better serve the church, and to better serve the world in which we live. Now, applying this to prophecy, we need to recognize that this gift is primarily equipping. There may be a predictive element to certain prophecies, but that is not why Paul writes here to the Ephesian church that the ministry of a prophet was given. It was given to equip people. So a few examples that we could give of this is, let's say somebody receives a prophetic word that they are supposed to do something for God. Let's say you receive a prophecy that God is calling you to be a missionary. Well, seeing that as merely predictive, you could see it as basically a guarantee that somebody someday is just gonna call you and ask you to come serve on the mission field. Seeing that prophecy as equipping might mean that you're gonna go out and study missions, uh, learn different ministry skills, study foreign language skills, etc. So you're not just seeing this as uh, a predictive thing that is like guaranteed to happen, but you are seeing it as equipping you to kind of like go on this path that you know that God is calling you to. Some biblical examples, Actually, both examples I'm going to take are from a prophet in the book of Acts named Agabus. And we read in Acts chapter 11 that he actually predicted that there was going to be a famine coming to Judea. Now, obviously, there was a predictive element to this, but we see in Acts chapter 11, verse 27, that there was an equipping element as well, because what it did is it basically let the people know that they were going to send relief to the Christians in Judea. So going now to Acts chapter 21, we once again encounter the prophet Agabus. And here he actually prophesies to Paul, who is on his way to Jerusalem, that if he goes to Jerusalem, he's going to be arrested. So Agabus actually tells Paul not to go to Jerusalem. An important thing to note is that in 1 Corinthians 13, 9, Paul says that we prophesy in part. So here Agabus was actually correct. Paul did in fact get arrested, uh, but he didn't really see the whole picture because he was telling Paul not to go when Paul knew that that was what God was calling him to. Ag Agabus did actually get some of the details wrong as well, but they were kind of minor details. But here we see the predictive nature of this prophecy, but also the equipping. So prophecy can come to even equip us for difficult times that are coming so that you know when those difficult times do come that God is still with you in them and you are still walking according to his plan. Now, the second element of these ministry gifts is that they edify. They are for the edification of the body of Christ. Now, when you think of the word edify, think of the word edifice, which is just another word for a building. So the gifts are meant to build people up, not tear people down. Paul actually writes in 1 Corinthians 14.3, he says, but those who prophesy speak to people for their strengthening, other translations use edification, their strengthening or edification, their encouragement and their comfort. So once again, they are to edify and build people up. So we wanna equip people in their spiritual maturity, their character development, and also their actual work of the ministry. So basically it's focusing on both the spiritual and the natural side of ourselves and the work that we are doing for Jesus Christ. So moving on to verse 13, we now see Paul talking about basically the desired results of this equipping and this edifying. Now, the first thing that he mentions is the unity of faith. Foundations are very important. It also is very important as to what we believe. A lot of people today think that, you know, theology or doctrine actually divides, uh, but that is not what the Bible says. The Bible says that our doctrine actually edifies, it builds us up, and it obviously helps us to walk in the things that God has for us. 
there is a faith that God has for us and we should allow God to bring us to that. We also need to acknowledge that unity is very important. In John chapter 17, Jesus Christ is actually praying for his disciples and the people who were going to come to faith through their word. And in John 17, 23, Jesus says, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. So Jesus is saying here that the unity that Christians are able to have is actually going to be a light uh, to the world around them that we can very clearly see at this time is very uh, divided. But he also talks about the unity of the knowledge of the Son of God. Once again, we should want to gain more and more knowledge of Jesus Christ. We need to pursue knowledge of God at this time like never before. Many people try to make God into something that they want him to be, but God is who he is. In the Old Testament, he refers to himself as the I am. Now, Jesus was speaking to the religious leaders of his day, and he said to them, you search the scriptures thinking that in them you have eternal life, but you don't even realize that they're talking about me. Does that sound familiar? How many Christians today approach the scriptures and their Christian walk thinking just about what they have to do to get into heaven? But the Bible is about a person. It is about the revelation of God himself. Now, the third element that Paul brings up here is that we are called to perfection or maturity, depending on the translation you use. Uh, New King James does use perfection, but once again, the, the meaning of that word is actually, basically it's a spiritual maturity becoming all that God has for us. And then it talks about the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So it's just important to know that we need to strive to be all that God has called us to be. Uh, this is the full stage of our development, if you will. It doesn't mean we are going to be flawless. Uh, no human being uh, has ever done that except Jesus Christ. But even Hebrews chapter 6, it talks about uh, laying again the foundations, but then it says to go on to perfection or maturity. So this is one of the reasons that the, the ministry gifts are actually given is to bring people to perfection or maturity. Now, John Wesley, among others, in the late 1700s started talking about this, and it was very controversial at the time, which when you consider scriptures like this from Ephesians 4 and Hebrews 6, it's kind of mind-boggling how it could be controversial because they're actually telling us that the reason God set these ministers in the church is to help bring people to spiritual maturity. So when we're filled with the Holy Spirit, there is something that God wants to happen inside of us that is going to reflect him to the world around us. And we're not supposed to just be children, but we're supposed to grow to maturity. Uh, we're supposed to grow up. Um, a heaven-centered gospel is really an incomplete gospel. We really need to focus, especially in this day and age with all the crazy things going around, about really becoming all that God wants us to be. Now, the fourth thing that Paul talks about is no longer being carried about by every wind of doctrine. And then it talks about the trickery of men, deception, and all that. But in 1 Corinthians 2, 6 and Ephesians 3, 5, Paul talks about things like the wisdom and the rulers of this age that are coming to nothing. He talks about the rulers of the darkness of this age. There are a lot of winds of doctrine blowing around out there, and the truth is that a lot of people are being carried away by them. So God wants us to be mature enough to understand the difference. He wants his people to be a discerning people. So in summary, we see that the purpose of prophetic ministry involves two main things. That's equipping and edifying. And the equipping and edifying leads to four main desired results. And that's unity of faith, unity of the knowledge of God, uh, perfection or maturity, really experiencing the fullness of Christ, and also becoming a discerning people that are no longer carried about by the winds of doctrine that are blowing all over the world today. If this video ministered to you today, I'd encourage you to check out the Call from the Mountain YouTube channel. You can like the video, you can share the video with your friends, and you can subscribe to the channel because we have a lot of other great content on there as well.